The Green Bay Packers under Matt LaFleur have been nothing if not adaptive. How will they push their defensive scheme forward this season with a ton of new and exciting pieces? How will they evolve the offense, which will have to change without Devontae Adams and Marquez Valdez-Scantling? We dig into it all. The dirty, nitty-gritty X's and O's with our pal Ben Fennell on today's show. You are Locked On Packers. Your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. You can follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you get podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet, and the show for fans who know what happened. They want to know why and how. Thanks for making Locked on Packers your first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. And today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. All of your gambling needs are met at Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Ben Fennel on the show today to talk about a Packers defense everyone is really excited about. And he explains why he is excited about this Packers offense, even if it's going to look very different than it did at times last season, and certainly very different than it looked in 2019. Um, Although maybe some of those games without Devontae Adams in 2019 will give us a preview. Before we get to Ben, today's episode brought to you by our friends at BetOnline. BetOnline is your number one source for all of your betting needs. Find all the latest developments, league reviews, and news. We've got Major League Baseball going on. We've got NFL futures, NBA futures, golf it's all there for you at Bet Online, and Bet Online is the best source for all of your scores, plus sports wagering info. There's live betting, esports, the fastest and easiest way to get some action in on all of the sports that you are trying to follow, or if you're not trying to follow them and you're trying to make some money on them, like make something more interesting. Oh, I got to watch this. Now yeah, let's put a little money on it. Bet Online, a great place to do that. Bet Online, where the game starts. Joining me now, he is. The master with the clicker, the X's and O's guru, Ben Fennell, uh, back with us again. And and Ben, you have to have been on as much as anyone we've had on since this show started. So it's great to have you back. Um, I think this team is going to look different than it than it did last year and the year before. And it, and they've they've done some evolutions here, but this to me seems like it's going to have to be the biggest evolution of this offense moving forward. When you first found out about the Devontae Adams trade. What was your first like thought about how this offense is going to have to make some changes just like months ago before we even had the draft? Well, I appreciate the introduction and I feel like I've been slacking a little bit on my clicker fingers the past few months <laughs> as I've taken a little break after the draft, but picking it back up very intense over the weekend, actually a little sore today, might even be a blister forming here. So <laughs> we are ramping the film back up here early July. But this Packers team is going to look different. And when I first heard that Devontae Adams news, I was sad to see a star elite player, elite, you know, likable player on and off the field go as I would for anybody. But I was okay with it. And I felt at peace because this isn't an offense that relies on star power. This is a system and it's a balanced system that Matt LaFleur has come and implored in Green Bay. And it's not just throw the keys to Aaron Rodgers and say, get us yards, chunk plays and win us ball games. This is a methodical offensive approach where it's not about one guy. And I think we've seen that with the Packers before without Devontae Adams. And I believe it was early 2020 where the stars of the week rotated from, you know, DeGuara and to um, Tunyon and Devontae had his week. And then all of a sudden Lazard had a big week and then Aaron Jones had his week. And that's really the essence of this Packers offense that anybody can beat you on any given week. And sometimes when Aaron Rodgers and the offense focuses a little bit too much on one player, as he might have on that last play against San Francisco in the playoffs, bad things and bad habits can creep back in. So I love the fact that this is going to be a well-distributed offense, as it's always been, just without a Devontae Adams. Uh, So 
I I wonder what your it seems like I, I have a feeling what your answer is going to be on this, but you have from the beginning of the Matt LaFleur era preached, let the system do the thing. And and when you play on time and in rhythm, remember uh, all of the, I, I don't know if you've made t-shirts yet, but we need to make the t-shirts that Aaron Rodgers best plays are from the pocket. Let's get those going. Um, and it seems to me that this is going to force that onto Aaron Rodgers. And you hope, I think, for the sake of this offense, that it does not devolve into just go do a thing, Aaron Rodgers, just go make a play, which was, I think, the McCarthy offense far too often by design or just by Aaron Rodgers intent. So do you do you think we're going to see more of the 2020 version of this offense where you're seeing um, where you're, they're probably going to face a lot of man coverage because no one's going to be afraid of these receivers early on? They're going to get to go to all of those creative, you know, mesh packages and concepts they like to get to. And we're going to see more of the Matt LaFleur version of this offense versus the Aaron Rodgers version of this offense. And I feel like that's been the maturation since that 2019 or is a bit of a hybrid into a full force in 2020 and 2021. And Aaron Rodgers back to back MVP has really reaped the benefits of this system. So I'm excited to see Matt LaFleur say this is fully my system, my offense and Aaron Rodgers is going to orchestrate it for me. And I think without the Devontae Adams, listen, the best receiver in the NFL, no offense is getting better without right. that type of player. So I want to make sure everybody understands. I value Devontae Adams and his ability as highly as any receiver in the NFL. And I just love that his production was a product of the offense. And I just think we're going to see more of that just without the elite star in Devontae Adams. And that's okay because Matt LaFleur helps people win. He helps people get off the line of scrimmage, whether it's bunches and stacks and things like that to get free access. He helps guys get open in the route, helps them get open based on offensive balance with a commitment to the run game. And then all of a sudden defenses allocate resources to stop it. Then you capitalize off of it. That's beautiful. And like we saw those rotating stars in 2020, you can see Devontae Adams win a route. And I could show you Malik Taylor winning the same way. And that's the beauty of this offense in that, Anybody should be able to plug and play. Now, when you have a Devontae Adams in there, you could take a 12-yard catch and turn it into a 30-yard touchdown because he's special. Now let's see who's going to take the next step individually and maybe be special, whether that's Lazard taking the next step or maybe a young Christian Watson or Romeo Dubs is that next guy to kind of carry the torch. Yeah, and I, I have I have used this example over and over and over in 2019 when Devontae Adams was hurt against Atlanta and they had no one. They ran a four, I think it was fourth and six. They ran a play for Malik Taylor designed to get him open in a way that you would, to your point, use Devontae Adams. And it worked because of the scheme, because of the situation, they knew what they were getting and, and they dialed up the right thing. I, I, I think I've seen you say versions of this on Twitter and, and, you know, in, in conversations that I've, that I've heard you had on, on whether it was a, you were a guest on a podcast, I will speak for myself and then let you respond. I thought last year, especially at the end of the year, they fell a little in love with their stuff, their their concepts, and they they became a little bit too um, reliant on just staple concepts. Like, hey, we're going to run like the same six, eight things over and over and dare you to beat us. And in the playoffs, that came back to bite them. Do you think that is an accurate assessment of what happened? I think that's a fair assessment. Okay. And I think that's really where, you know, the Sean McVeighs and the Kyle Shanahan's have kind of deviated and extended from Matt LaFleur in that they've really kind of developed some of their own ingredients and recipes to the meals that they're making, which is essentially they're all working at the same restaurants. But how are you preparing it and what types of dishes in your menu? And are you changing your weekly menu and your tasting menu? And I feel like McVeigh and Shanahan have gotten really creative in some of their menus and ingredients. Matt LaFleur knows what he likes. He runs it really well. Now he can run that same kind of concept at a different personnel groupings and different looks. And it's the same meal, just on different plates and being prepared different ways, same ingredients and things like that. And I completely agree. I don't feel like he's deviated enough and had that self-scouting to say, we need more ebbs with our flows. And everything has that wrinkle to it. And everything has that zone, zone, zone. And then we have our counter run but having more creativity to attack opposing defenses 
within the season, late into the season, as you're repeating opponents into the playoffs, when you have to start coming up with reasons this team has not continued in the playoffs, that is one of them, Peter, not yeah. being diverse enough. And as much as we love plays like that, you know, all go halfback seam, they've run it to death and it's almost getting boring. And I've seen Aaron Rodgers hit every receiver in that route tree, and they've run it from a million looks and formations and personnel groupings. But you now need to add some more layers to this offense, more creativity. I love they have a foundation, and that foundation is the run game. Don't be fooled by that. But adding more creative wrinkles off of that, I think, is really going to be the name of the game in 2022. And we've seen it from time to time. We've seen the the semblance of the you know double reverse halfback pass things like that that didn't materialize and stuff you see on tape. But adding to that and continuing that, I think, is going to be a big uh, goal for Matt Lafleur this summer into the season. And I've always wondered how much of the commitment to those concepts is an Aaron Rodgers thing versus a Matt Lafleur thing. And and maybe they decided that hey, we're just we're like. They're a heavy RPO team. Two years ago or three years ago, I never would have thought that that would be the case. How much of that is Aaron Rodgers saying, I want to prioritize getting the ball to Devontae Adams? How much of that is Matt LaFleur? I think that that is still an open question to some degree. Like we've heard Aaron Rodgers say, or, or I think it was actually Matt LaFleur say, that sometimes Aaron has to remind him that just because something works doesn't mean you need to try something new. Let's go back to the thing that worked. And so th I think there's an interesting push-pull there that maybe we'll maybe we'll find out with the loss of Devontae Adams, what that what was really driving that? Did they do that because they knew Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams were always going to make that work? And and now they have to do what they could have always done and just didn't do. I, I think I just think that's an that's an interesting um push and pull that that maybe we'll get an answer to this year. I want to I'm gonna flip to the defensive side because this is a defense that is now loaded with talent. They have been very talented over the last couple of years and just not quite gotten there let's start with that part of it why do you think this defense has not played to at least the perceived level of its talent the last few seasons even though i think it was better last year that's a great question and i think that's kind of a collective question in the nfl and i've blanket statement this concept in this conversation as i think defense is broken for the last two to three years almost. And to see uh, Nick Saban beat Ole Miss 55 to 40-something and sit there frustrated <laughs> at the podium and say, I don't know what to do anymore because now rules are working against defenses and they're just swimming uphill and they're really just kind of figuring out, well, what do we do now? Man, coverage is broken. Let's just play back and force teams to dink and dunk us. Let's stop the run on early downs, hopefully get into advantageous third downs, make a stop or two, but we have to stop the explosive plays. So these teams that are just playing GTFB, which is get the F back defense, <laughs> keep it in front of you, force teams to go 10 plays, are now having fan bases that are frustrated with easy completions all over the place. So you have to kind of pick your poison and pick what you want to do. And I think the Packers' defensive philosophy – for a long time, the last two, three years, has been that conservative approach. So I think fans grew frustrated with that. Now, after the Dom Capers era, I was ready for a conservative approach. <laughs> they were getting beat over the top too often. There was too many yep. coverage busts and confusions and breakdowns. And everybody just said, get back and play soft. Like, keep it in front of you. And now we're doing that. And it's, well, why can't we be more aggressive? So I think defense collectively is really hard to play these days. So I think what the Packers are doing is adequate. I think they're preventing the big plays, trying to stop the run, and just get into advantageous situations. We need to really recalibrate what it means to be a dominant defense in 2022 NFL because it is not the same as the 2000s, the 90s, the 80s, and era after era after era. Stopping an offense to 20 points a game now has the framework of being a dominant defense. Right. As crazy as that is. So you need to refocus on who this Packers team is and what your expectations are. So while they maybe haven't been that team you want, especially down the stretch, I am excited with the talent they added this offseason. And I think they're getting better and better and catching up to this offense. Maybe not quite a defensive team yet, but I think becoming a much more balanced team heading into the season. I, I think that's a that's a great point and well said. I, I, lo I love what you said about um, defense being broken. I think that that's right. And it's why we're seeing the, this Brandon Staley, Vic Fangio, too high world where everyone's going, 
We just can't allow teams to beat us over the top. And it has stymied some really good offenses. It stymied the Packers offense. Um, you, you go back to, to 2015. Um, and, and we saw Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, some of those guys also have issues when they can't create the explosives. Then what you have to have those counters. And, and I think for the Packers, they've said, we don't think you can be as efficient as our offense. So we're going to make you go 10, 12, 15 plays and score on us. Unfortunately in 2020, they did. They said that to Tom Brady and Tom Brady said, bet. And, and they did right. it. And so <laughs> sometimes that that's just going to happen. Right. Um, and that's and what makes the Brady's and the Breezes and those types of guys special because no defense. Well, and even Rodgers this last year, right? When yes. he became precise, they could have 10, 12 play drives. They didn't need those explosives because Rodgers was so efficient, so surgical that, okay, you want to play too high? Cool. We can still throw it against you in too high. That's the, the Packers' perspective. The question now is like, how do they how do they continue to do that without someone like Devontae Adams? I, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. I was just going to say that just that uh, quickly to the notion of the Brady and the Rogers, a breeze, mm. no defense covers everything, right? It's the veteran quarterbacks that can assess that and dissect it better than the young guys. And this was my big gripe with Rogers several years ago. Wasn't making that transition into being a pocket passing assassin, which you don't get older and more mobile. You get older and know where to go with the ball because you understand not every defense has a solution. So I just need to know where do I go with the ball? And I think you're starting to see that more. And Tom Brady, yeah, he he called bluff with, you know, the way the Packers wanted to play him and picked us apart. But it's also great to see Aaron Rodgers do that to opposing defenses too. And in the second half, Mike Patton turned up the heat and credit to him and created some turnovers in the Packers offense, unfortunately, which we don't have to rehash that whole that whole game. But, you know, that was that was a cat and mouse game that I actually thought was was pretty fun in the moment um, until the until the end. Uh, so with the, with the personnel that you mentioned, the, the additions, Quay Walker, Devonte Wyatt, they have said in a number of forms from whether it's Joe Barry, whether it's Brian Gutekunst, whether it's Matt LaFleur, they want to be able to stay big in nickel. They want to have, they want to keep Quay Walker on the field and rather than do the Mike Patton thing and play dime and say, okay, we don't care at all about the run. We only care about not giving up big plays in the passing game. They want to play that four man front with two behind and actually try and fit the run a little bit from those situations. What do you think that gives them? Why do you, why is that their goal? Well, I think the continuity for one and not having as many interchangeable parts and different personnel packages for every situation. So having a more mainstay pair at inside linebacker, I think helps the collective continuity and particularly at inside linebacker where you're affecting the guys in front of you. You're affecting the guys to the left and right and affecting the guys behind you. It's a very nucleus position. Well, when that's a revolving door, that means there's different people to get comfortable with on a down-to-down -down basis. I love that Blake Martinez never came off the field. That was great continuity. But the person playing next to him changed every down. And I didn't love that aspect of it. So I think Quay and Campbell essentially is the end of the dime package. I think they're going to be every down linebackers excuse me, that can cover, that can blitz, that can stop the run, uh, and that really don't have to come off the field. And then that allows really the collective rest of the defense to feel more comfortable about their roles, their responsibilities, uh, and how they can attack. So I'm really excited with the front seven, the Quay edition, the Vontae Wyatt edition. Don't forget about Jerron Reed, veteran coming over from the Kansas City Chiefs, a former double-digit sack guy with the Seahawks. Uh, coming out of Alabama a few years ago, I think this front seven is going to be much tougher uh, on early downs. And some of these guys, I don't think, have to come off the field, whether it's Quay, whether it's Devontae Wyatt or Jerron Reed. These are two-way players that can survive in bases and survive in sub-packages. I really, really love the talent they added. Ben, this was great, man. We could talk for for hours um, and, uh, hopefully we will, we'll get you back soon and we can do that once we get to see some, especially some of these young players on the field. Um, Aaron Rodgers said he wants production, not, uh, potential. So we'll actually see what these guys can do coming up here very soon. Thanks, Ben. All right. Thanks to Ben for joining the show. Great to talk to him. Uh, I always learn something and, um, I, he, he takes us to school a little bit. That's why I love to have Ben on. He's, he's a, a great guy and, and it's so, so smart, uh, when it comes to, when it comes to ball for sure. Today's episode is brought to you by Rock Autumn. 
With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. So why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questions and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brands their warehouse happened to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket, so why choose to spend 30%, 50%, even 100% more for the same part from a chain store or car dealership? Why, why would you do that? You're costing yourself money. Go to their website and check out all of their solutions to your auto parts needs. In fact, go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen. Now go make your second listen, Locked On NFL. Our national NFL experts and insiders keep fans dialed in with the biggest stories and the latest news from around the league because an offseason doesn't equal a break in the action. All right, coming up on Wednesday, Andy Herman is here to talk about his grades. And that is for a very specific reason. He has been very good at... I'm giving Andy a compliment, so buckle up. Andy has been very good at essentially predicting guys who would not be on the team by looking at his lowest graded players. And the Packers seem to agree with Andy's grades when it comes to evaluating their on-field potential because these guys inevitably are not on the team the next season. And so we're going to talk about some of those guys, some of the guys who are gone, some of the guys who are still on the team. And it's going to be a really interesting conversation as we head toward training camp. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers. And anytime you want to hit us up on the Locked on Packers fan hotline, you can do that 920-341-3775 to stay Locked on Packers.